Two days before his record run, we meet Freddy in a hotel in St. Moritz. It's his greatest challenge. Freddy wants to do the walk completely blind. He trains here for four hours every day. Sometimes he still has difficulty keeping the rope under control. Oops, oops. now I'm getting into trouble. Don't get nervous. Keep calm, it's just like rubber. Then it will even out and I can carry on. It's this helmet that will get Freddy the triple world record, because in it, Freddy can see absolutely nothing. The opaque helmet was made specially for him. High wire walkers have often appeared to be walking blind, using tricks to find a way to see the rope anyway. That's the ultimate dirty trick. So I can balance here, whoops, and most of all, I can catch myself, so I know where this is. So that means you can see through the bottom. But that's exactly what you can't do with this helmet. Our editor has put it on to see for herself. OK, it's open now, but it's cut in such a way that I can't see through the bottom. No way. I can't see a thing, and apart from that, I think I'd get claustrophobic. Carry on, carry on, even further. <laughs> Nothing at all, no reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but no more training today, he gets a call. The rope is swinging too much. Mountain workers are trying to stabilize it somehow, but Freddy doesn't leave them doing it on their own and wants to fly up to help immediately. This extreme sportsman's greatest fear is not being in control, and even as an altitude record holder, he has a fear of flying. I'm afraid of things I can't control myself. And that's exactly his problem. Only experienced mountain workers are allowed to install guy ropes to stabilize the main rope at the bottom. Uh, what they're doing is quite risky, so I have to trust them. The workers laboriously try to secure the guy ropes in the inaccessible mountain. Even after the work, the rope moves too much. So now it has to be tightened. It's tightened with six tons. Three times as much would actually be necessary, but such a force could break the rock and trigger an avalanche. Because here in this alpine terrain at over three and a half thousand meters, Freddy wants to achieve a triple world record, a 350 meter high wire walk at the highest altitude, completely blind and with the furthest drop. That makes a height difference of 50 meters and a gradient of 14%. At the highest point, the wire is almost a thousand meters above the ground. Freddy risks a first test run. He's still secured. It's not only the vibrations that are problematic, the rope turns under his feet. That would be fatal for a blind record run. Now it's starting to swing. That's a lot now, it's too loose. Too loose to walk on. Nevertheless, using a belay even during the record run is not an option for the son of a circus family. Quite simply, I don't trust that stuff. My parents, my grandparents always tell me that we have to rely on ourselves. Even as a little boy, I had it drummed into me, and I get an enormous kick out of walking across this valley unsecured. Fear is a feeling Freddy knows well. It helps him in dangerous situations. These are frightening situations, so when I slip and catch myself, there's a shock inside me. I can feel my pulse beat right up here, boom, 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 boom. And then I'm standing on the wire and I first have to calm myself down. So, wow, hey, that's what it's really like. I've always felt that something's watching over me, so if I get a feeling that tells me, no, you can't do it, then I won't do it. Then I'd rather call it off. Two days before the record run, Freddy returns to the hotel with a bad feeling. He's dejected. The conditions are disastrous. There's bad news from home as well. His four daughters can't come because of school. But even when his family is not with him, they give him support. We're not coming to St. Moritz. My heart is with you. I know you can do it. 
Things like that give me strength. That's what picks you up again. They'd like to be here. They miss you, and that's nice. <laughs> OK, stop. <laughs> One more day to the record run. Once again, Freddy can't train. He has to go up the mountain again. Now they've added water tanks today so that it has more weight. If we can't get the swinging to stop today, then we really have a problem. It really is a thousand metre drop, and then I have to decide what I'm actually capable of. That's what's bothering me the most now. Freddy flies up alone today to test everything in peace. We'll stay down in the middle station. Whether the workers will get the wire under control by tomorrow is still not clear. The press conference is scheduled for the evening in the hotel. The only ray of hope for Freddy, his wife and son Leo have arrived. Freddy knows that his work is a great burden for his wife. When I'm stressed out like this, I'm unbearable, and she knows that now. <laughs> the all-important day. At six in the morning, Freddy flies up the mountain. At an altitude of 3,500 meters, the extreme athlete hangs from the long line at the bottom. At the starting point, he abseils down. Freddy has never put on his opaque carbon helmet at this altitude. He attempts his first steps and gets a nasty surprise, the thin mountain air. As soon as the 50-year-old exerts himself, he gets out of breath. Whoops, knocks me out. I'm already a bit dizzy. I'm exhausted already. I'm just a village boy from five to six hundred meters above sea level. And you can tell, you know, it's a bit tough here. Freddy risks a trial run first. He's still secured, but it's not clear whether the rope is strong enough for him to attempt his record walk without a belay. Freddy struggles to keep his balance. The problem is, he can't breathe under the helmet. He has to take it off. The rope swings violently. Freddy has problems holding himself up. He's in danger of passing out. His strength has gone. He decides to stop. Wow, I'm dizzy. Wow. It's all too loose. But there's no time left to change it. The date for the event has been announced and fixed. Extra spectators and journalists have arrived at the mountain station to watch the world record attempt. Two hours before the start, wife Simina also makes her way to the middle station. Although Freddy is a father of five, Simina has always accepted his work. But there is one taboo subject between the two. We have never discussed what to do if something happens, never. It's not something we talk about. Nothing's going to happen. I can see him on the other side, so I always visualize him together with us. And there are no other images, no bad ones. With other spectators, Simena arrives at the mountain station for the press conference. But Freddy just seems totally in his own world. That's Freddy Nock. He just walked past you. Yes. Dad, here I am. Here I am. While the press waits outside, Freddy has retreated into his shell. Papa. For the first time in his world record life, Freddy is reaching his limits. <laughs> The extreme athlete underestimated this challenge. He has trained hard for months. But what's his gut feeling about the bad conditions?
Oh, emotions. Emotions. Not up there, but down here. You come here and you know where you were, what happened. The rope's not so perfect. I don't like it that much, but I'll still go unsecured. A bit preoccupied, because I've never seen him like that. <coughs> That's part of me. I want to fight, I want to achieve something that others can't do or don't do, and that's just such a challenge. At the same time, Freddy is putting pressure on himself because a world record attracts new sponsors. Freddy tells the press that despite massive problems in the trial run, he was going to do the whole thing unsecured. He takes his helmet with him, but he wants to do the first half without it because the swinging is too extreme. Saying goodbye is particularly difficult today. Freddy flies at an altitude of over 3,500 meters. A high wire walk at an altitude no extreme athlete has ever managed without a belay. If Freddy makes it, he'll get the triple world record. Two minutes past 12, Freddy's most dangerous walk begins, but he only gets two steps. I can feel it again, I can't breathe. Although the conditions have never been this bad on any of his previous walks, the father of five does not secure himself. Down in the hill station, Simena can hardly see anything. That's why she follows Freddy's walk on a screen. At 3,500 meters, her husband is fighting for his life on an 18 millimeter rope. From now on, Freddy relies only on himself. No belay, no safety net. The wire's movement is extreme. With every step, Freddy almost loses his balance. It's an enormous effort to keep upright. The air is much too thin. Freddy is about to faint. He needs to rest. But the swinging rope pulls his body weight to the right. With difficulty, Freddy tries to balance it with the bar. <coughs> Finally, Freddy has made it and is sitting down. The extreme athlete tries to gather his strength. Below him, 1,000 meters of free fall. But getting up turns out to be a disaster. Freddy not only has to lift himself, but also the 40 kilogram bar. On the next attempt, Freddy tries slowly, but again, he can't find his balance. Jimena has never seen her husband so unsteady. Freddy's now totally dizzy, but giving up is not an option for him. Finally, the high wire walker is on his feet again. Actually, he only calculated 15 minutes for the run. Now he's been on the rope for 20 minutes and has only done a third. His strength is fading, plus the thin mountain air at 3,500 meters. He's not prepared for these conditions. At the Swiss flag, Freddy has finally completed half of the course. Wow. My pulse is 300. Okay. If not 400. He never did that either that he sits and stands and sits again. He's probably a bit dizzy from the height too. From here on in, Freddy wants to walk blind. Can he take the risk? No, Freddy doesn't have his helmet on. 
even without it. The high wire walker is unsecured against the vibrations and his breathing difficulties. Nevertheless, even without a helmet, he can break the world record for the highest rope run, provided he doesn't break off now. Because the second hurdle is coming up. Freddy now has to shift his entire body weight forwards, because here there's also an incline. Freddy has to overcome a height difference of 50 meters. But as soon as he has mentally freed himself from putting on his helmet, he makes rapid progress. Only a few more meters. 39 minutes later, Freddy reaches his goal and breaks his 19th world record. Awesome, super, can't even describe it. Are you disappointed that you didn't make it blind? You know me, I'm on safety. I had a big mouth with blind and everything. I just tell myself I'm not taking any chances. I'll pick another spot, also blind, but we'll do it better. While Freddy is already making new plans, downstairs there's relief and joy, especially among his family. In the end, it becomes clear that not only the runner on the steel cable has nerves of steel, but so does his wife.